I am Dr. LaTanya Goffney, proud superintendent of Aldean ISD and a proud member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. This month, Aldean ISD is celebrating black history and black excellence. Throughout the month, we recognize those who have come before us, those who planted the trees that created the shade we enjoy. We honor the work, the fight, the innovation, the change, and the legacy of African Americans. I believe that education is a great equalizer. I was a first generation college student and I had great educators in my life who encouraged me to apply for college. Education gave me access to opportunities that I may have never dreamed possible. Can you imagine education not being available to you based on the color of your skin? For nearly 200 years, Historically, black colleges and universities, HBCUs, have been the foundation of education and advocacy for black Americans. Their educational offerings show the black community that they can dream bigger in their professional aspirations. Similarly, black Greek letter organizations were founded to provide black college students a safe space and community while facing adversity and injustice. <laughs> Although I did not attend an HBCU, Becoming a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated was one of the best decisions I could have ever made. Each member of the Divine Nine shared the goal of making a difference in our communities. We are our ancestors' wildest dreams. As we reflect this month, remember to take advantage of the opportunities you are afforded. Greetings, I am Felicia M. Nave, and I have the pleasure of serving as the 20th president of Alcorn State University. Alcorn State University is located in Southwest Mississippi, where we serve over 3,000 students who are attracted from nearly all of Mississippi counties, 34 states, and 24 countries, providing them a transformative educational experience. It is a tremendous opportunity to be a president at any institution, but it's a distinct pleasure to serve at an institution as a historically black college and university that has such a strong legacy and tradition of serving students who've been marginalized, underrepresented, who didn't have access and opportunity. So it elates my heart to be able to continue amongst those leaders across our country who provided the leadership, the guidance, the transformation in order to make this country a better place and bring educational opportunities to those who may not have an opportunity. It's especially a wonderful opportunity because Alcorn State University is my alma mater to be able to come back and lead an institution with such a storied history that has meant so much to so many, that includes myself and my family, is tremendous, it's fantastic, it's absolutely awesome to be afforded such a humbling opportunity to continue to build on such a strong legacy. Alcorn State University has a tremendous history and legacy of educating students who made their mark and had a significant impact across not only this great nation, but across the world. We've graduated students who hold key positions as scientists, as medical doctors, in dentistry, in the media, entertainment, sports, civil rights, just to name a few. So as we look toward the future of Alcorn State University, it is my goal to help transform and elevate the experience of our students, to broaden our visibility, to exp expand on the tradition of excellence that is known as Alcorn State University. We are an excellent university. As we continue to grow and expand our experience and our footprint, we're moving from excellence to preeminence amongst HBCUs and amongst institutions of higher learning in general. It is important to us that our students have a transformative experience that prepares them not just for careers today, but for careers for the future.
Before your time, there was a saying, the future is so bright, I gotta wear shades. And I would use that to describe what the future looks like for HBCUs. We are uniquely positioned at a point in time where our roles and the importance of the educational access and opportunity that we provide is more relevant than ever. So our future as HBCUs is one that's a shooting star. And I anticipate and expect that you will see more students selecting and choosing HBCUs, not just for their academics, but also for sports, for get their careers started. HBCUs are the place to be. Education is the vehicle to upward mobility. It's important that you continue to focus on doing a good job uh, in your studies, getting good grades, participating in various activities, whether that's in sports, student council, ROTC, because they help to develop you as a full, well-rounded individual. And as you begin to look for what you're gonna do next, and I know that that's a big, scary thing, because life itself can be scary. But with the preparation, with communication such as this, with doing some homework, you can prepare yourself to be ready. I too was sitting in the seat that you're sitting in right now. And I didn't always know what it was that I wanted to do, what I wanted to major in, where I was gonna go to college, such big decisions. But there were people who were in my life, like my teachers, my counselors, my parents, who were very instrumental in helping and make sure that I had access to information and helped me make some of those decisions. And so when it came time to select a college, of course, my family politely drove me on down the road to the, the institution that helped to make them, that prepared them to go out into the world and to be successful in their careers. If it was good enough for my parents and their friends and several of my teachers, and I knew how good of a job they'd done at preparing me, then it was definitely worth trying. So when I got here on the campus of Alcorn State University, that by the way, I came to quite a bit uh, as a child, it was a remarkable experience. I got to meet new people. I got to be poured into and developed uh, by teachers from all around the world. People who cared about me as a person, not a number, not sitting in huge classes, but individuals, teachers, staff, um, who were willing to take the time to get to know me, Felicia, the person, what my hopes, my dreams, my aspirations were. And as they learned about me, I trusted the advice and the guidance that they provided. It did not steer me wrong based on the foundation that I received here at Alcorn State University. I've been able to achieve all of the uh, career goals that I've set for myself. A little girl from a small town in Jeff Davis County called Prentice, Mississippi has been all around the world, have presented uh, in all kinds of places to professionals, I've been to Congress, I've testified. All of it started right here at Alcorn State University, uh, HBCU. And so for all of those of you who are thinking first, whether or not even completing your education and going to college, whether it makes a difference and it matters, I tell you, it absolutely does. It is the right choice. Choosing an HBCU, is that a good choice? Absolutely, because in coming to this environment, you will be uh, interacted with, engaged with, and come into contact with people who truly care about you and who are looking toward helping you develop and grow and become the best you that you can be. I live a great life, and it all started here at Alcorn State University. A for Alabama State University, established in 1867 in Montgomery, Alabama. B 
Bethune-Cookman University, established in 1904 in Daytona Beach, Florida. C. Clark Atlanta University, established in 1865 in Atlanta, Georgia. Dillard University, established in 1869 in New Orleans, Louisiana. E. For Edward Waters College, established in 1866 in Jacksonville, Florida. Handle your business. F is for Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University, also known as FAMU, established on October the 3rd, 1887 in Tallahassee, Florida. G for the Grambling State University, established November 1st, 1901 in Grambling, Louisiana. H for Hampton University, established in 1868 in Hampton, Virginia. H for Howard University, the real HU, established in 1867, Washington, D.C. Who is the real HU? I, for Interdenominational Theological Center, established in 1958 in Atlanta, Georgia. J is for Jarvis Christian College, home of the Bulldogs. K, for Kentucky State University, established in 1866 in Frankfort, Kentucky. L for Lincoln University, established January 14, 1866 in Jefferson City, Missouri. M for Miles College, established in 1898 in Fairfield, Alabama. N for North Carolina Central University, established July 5, 1910 in Durham, North Carolina. O for Oakwood University, Established 1896 in Huntsville, Alabama. P for Paul Quinn College. Established April 4th, 1872 in Dallas, Texas. Q, question. Have you ever thought about attending an HBCU? Hmm. R for Rust College. Established 1866 in Holy Springs, Mississippi where tomorrow's leaders are students today. S is for Spelman College, established in 1880 in Atlanta, Georgia. Spelman College, a choice to change the world. T is for Tennessee State University, established in 1912 in Nashville, Tennessee. U is for the University of the Virgin Islands in St. Thomas and St. Croix, established in 1962. V for Voorhees College, established in 1924 in Denmark, South Carolina. Voorhees College, begin, believe, become. W for Wilberforce University, established in 1856 in Wilberforce, Ohio. X for Xavier University of Louisiana, established in 1925 in New Orleans, Louisiana. Y and Z. I can't think of any Y or Z schools. It's fine. Hey guys, Marcus here. I have the opportunity and the pleasure today to speak with you about the marching arts within HBCU programs here in the United States. Now, if you don't know what an HBCU is, it just stands for Historically Black College or University. All of these were established before the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Now, even though most HBCU marching band programs have a very distinct and personal identity to their styles now, when they first started off, the style was very militaristic and it was very reminiscent of the military bands uh, that were already present within that day. The first band we're gonna check out here today is the wonderful band at Tuskegee University. Now, uh, Tuskegee is credited for having the first marching band program uh, of any HBCU out there. 
Let's check them out. <laughs> the power, the passion, the precision is off the charts with these groups. And it's so fun to, to get to see the energy um, of, of which they perform their, their repertoires. It's truly a, a wonderful thing that you should see live. Now, this next university touches me personally, um, and I'm talking about the wonderful Florida A&M University. Now, their music program has produced some of the best jazz musicians, some of the best solo artists out there, and that also includes a personal connection of mine, Mr. Alfred Watkins. Now, he is known for being one of the best high school directors and overall uh, musicians and, and music teachers in the nation. Uh, he's a direct product of Florida A&M University. He's an alumni there, and, uh, and he has taught many, many years here before he retired in Georgia at Lasseter High School, which is known for having one of the best music programs in the nation. Check out Florida A&M University. <laughs> One of the things you might also notice is that within the culture that's, that's surrounded um, within HBCUs is they're very in touch uh, with, with just the cutting edge songs. You'll notice that a song will come out and then they'll immediately be playing that song on that very next Friday um, for their audience. And it's almost like magic how quickly they learn their repertoire. So they have a, a, very, a very concise and intimate knowledge with the culture that's on the street around them and, and the heartbeat of the people that they serve. Check out this piece from Grambling University. If you want to talk about HBCUs and you want to talk about bands, you have to give the drumline some love. I'm a percussionist myself, and even when I was a little kid, I loved that my parents, when we would go to the games at Fort Valley State University, would let me leave them, even as a little kid, to go sit beside the drumline. And just that power and how it would shake my little ribs gave me a passion that has lasted a lifetime, even up until now. Um, so let's check out a few drum lines. This is the wonderful and precise drum line of Bethune-Cookman University. Wonderful. Now for something way different. So even within the style of HBCU marching bands and drum lines, there, there are plenty of different little pockets. There, there's plenty of different little conferences and the ways that people play. Check out Alabama A&M.
<laughs> okay, okay, one more, one more. This is one of my favorite. The, the precision, the cleanness of the group, the cohesiveness of their stick heights and everything. This is North Carolina A&T State University. Check them out. That's nice. <laughs> so I highly encourage you at a certain point in order to get the full experience, um, to, to go out to a game, to sit, get some nachos, bring a little butt pad and, and just enjoy the marching bands, the, the, the interplay going back and forth, the, the idea of, of a battling type competition. And then of course, the spectacle of, of hearing some of the freshest charts, seeing beautiful dance moves that are executed with precision and power during the halftime show is just a wonderful thing. And you have to be inside of that energy, inside of the stadium to experience that for yourself. The videos really don't do it justice. So I'm glad that I got a chance to present a lot of these colleges for you here today. Now, something that's very passionate to my heart is what happens to students in order to elevate them to these wonderful and distinguished colleges and universities. It's what happens before then that ends up making these programs successful. And right here in Georgia, I would like to make you aware of a few different programs you can donate to or give maybe some of your time and resources to that consistently send wonderful students to these colleges and universities. The first one I wanna make you aware of is Created to Play. They're based out of Augusta, Georgia, and they consistently train people in, in the marching arts, and they've sent a plenty of people out to some of these HBCUs, and they show up prepared, and they show up ready to take on the next generation of leadership. Check them out. Up next is the wonderful Atlanta Drum Academy. They're out of Atlanta, and once again, they consistently train students of all ages, all the way up through college age, to just become wonderful human beings, great life lessons through the art of playing drums, and they send plenty of people um, to these HBCUs and other colleges all throughout the United States. They are under the direction of James Rouse, who had major parts in both of the Drumline movies. You might have seen maybe one of those, but the kids here have made multiple uh, national appearances on TV, and they continuously have performances throughout the community here in Atlanta and in plenty of other states. Check them out. That was wonderful. So once again, I thank you for spending a little bit of your day with me here today. And if you have any questions about any of these things, you can definitely Google anything about HBCU drumlines. You can um, send an email to any of the directors in your local area to ask how you can be of assistance. They're always looking for, of course, support with uh, hiring instructors with getting equipment, rehearsal spaces, and all of those types of things. And of course, the best way to experience any of this is just to go out to a game, go out to a battle of the bands, go to a, a competition, and experience the sounds, the power, and the precision for yourself. See you guys.
Hello, my name is Terrence Robinson, and I am a member of the first intercollegiate organization for African Americans, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated was founded on December 4th, 1906, on the campus of Cornell University, located in Ithaca, New York. Being a member of a Greek lettered organization means that you are in fine company. Some of the most influential and impactful individuals in this nation's history are members of the Mind Nine organizations. Some of our famous members are Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois, Judge Thurgood Marshall, and Frederick Douglass. Specifically, in Aldine, there are two schools named after some of my prestigious fraternity brothers. Blanson CTE High School is named for Dr. Archie Blanson and Griggs Primary, named after the late Merlin Griggs Sr. My high school principal, Mr. David Alexander, inspired me to be an alpha. Although he never boasted or bragged about being a member, he led by example. I wanted to be the type of leader that Mr. Alexander displayed daily. In the fraternity, his example has led me to serving as a chapter president, district director for the state of Texas, and as a 23rd Southwestern Regional Vice President, which means that I had the opportunity and honor to serve as a national board member. The aims of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated are manly deeds, scholarship, and love for all mankind. I pledge to live and promote these consistently through my actions, volunteerism, and philanthropic efforts. There will always be a place and role for Black Greek lettered organizations. Although our organizations have different names and colors, we all strive to improve our local communities and provide a voice for the voiceless. We represent For more than a century, Black Greek organizations have made their voices heard on college campuses and in communities across the country. Well, the founders of these organizations, they understood that the pathway forward for us was together through unity. House Democratic Caucus Chair Hakeem Jeffries joined Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity at the age of 18. And it really was the first time in my life that anyone of importance and authority suggested to me uh, that they saw some leadership qualities and attributes uh, within me, and it's a moment that I've never forgotten. Moments like that, shared by many in the Divine Nine, the nine black sororities and fraternities that comprise the National Panhellenic Council. Vice President Kamala Harris has been outspoken about the impact her sorority has had on her. And along the way, you find people who help you become your true self. For me, that was my beloved Alpha Kappa Alpha sisters. In an election cycle marked by his historic first. It's hard to ignore the role these organizations have played. Georgia elected its first black senator, and America sent a black woman to the White House, both members of the Divine Nine. When I look at what Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated and other members of the Divine Nine are doing now, we're seeing that they are dedicated to voter education, mobilization, and participation. We're also seeing that even during a pandemic, the service never stops. Groundbreakers and trailblazers have always, in so many different ways, been connected to the Black fraternity and sorority organizations, including the great Shirley Chisholm, uh, who was a proud member of the Delta Sigma Theta sorority. I have always been a catalyst for change. The founders of these organizations, while they perhaps could never have envisioned that one day we would ascend to the highest levels of power and authority in the land, including within the Congress and now the White House. But I certainly know they dreamed it and believed that they were laying a foundation for great things to occur. But because of my HBCU and Divine Nine family, I know I'm never the only person who looks like me or has had my life experiences. 
Even today, we are 113 years after our founding. That is a strong legacy. And we're still able to see the ways in which the United States does not treat all of its citizens equally. Have they gotten better? Definitely. They have definitely improved from where they were 113 years ago. But can they be improved? Also, yes. We are passionate about the same issues within our communities, within the world at large, and we work together in order to achieve common goals. And if that isn't family, I don't know what is. A family that will remain rooted behind members as they embark on their barrier-breaking journeys. Month long, we are celebrating Black History at WCNC Charlotte. This week, we continue our discussion on education. We've been highlighting historically black colleges and universities. Greek organizations are a big part of the culture at HBCUs. WCNC Charlotte's Aisha Scott has the story from Johnson C. Smith University. The history of black Greek letter organizations like the one I'm a part of, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, dates back to the early 1900s when African American students were excluded from Greek organizations on predominantly white campuses. Black sororities and fraternity works were created on the basis of exclusion, right? Um, at some point, um, there were a group of black men who were trying to be part of an organization and they needed votes. Um, one white vote meant they couldn't be a part of the organization, so they decided to start their own. Leland Howard is the president of the National Panhellenic Council of Charlotte, an organization that brings all nine black Greek letter organizations together for one common cause. We are able to work together to ensure that there's change in the community. Um, we work together to ensure that um, policies and social policies are being pushed. Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is the first black Greek letter fraternity founded in 1906 at Cornell University. Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated is the first black Greek letter sorority founded on the campus of Howard University in 1908. Also called the Divine Nine, these sororities and fraternities were founded on the principle of service, and it's a value that is still upheld to this day. We're out in the community. We're helping with voter education. We're helping with health care education, um, homelessness. You know, we're, we're feeding the homeless. We're out collecting supplies. Over the years, African-Americans have joined Black Greek letter organizations for a variety of reasons. I turned to a few of my colleagues to find out their why. My mother and my aunts are all members of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, and my uncle is a member of Omega Psi Phi. So growing up, I saw the service. I saw them being dedicated to giving back to their community. My stepdad's a member of Cap Alpha Psi, so that's all I ever knew. That's all he ever told me about. The Sigma's like, they helped me move in. They kind of like showed to me, they guided me. So it just in my head, I was like, well, if I was to ever, you know, play it, it would be probably that because I mean that's what stood out to me the most. They kind of adopted me as a little brother as I came in as a freshman and I just admired uh, the respect that they they demanded from the team and the respect that they got on campus and it was something that I wanted to be a part of. A part of organizations that often felt underestimated. We enjoy being underestimated because when we walk into spaces and, and people have doubted us we're showing beyond compare that we're ready, um, we're excited, and, and that we, we have been leading for a long time. It's just a matter of other people recognizing how great we are. Reporting in Charlotte, I'm Aisha Scott for WCNC Charlotte. to get up out my house, I had to leave, I'm gone, yeah, had to go out on my own, I had to show I'm gone, yeah, had to pay for all of this, I had to take a loan, but how it's homecoming made me feel I came home, all this turning up in doors and the laundry room, homecoming cook out like a family reunion, Tuskegee football games, then my guests they come in, forget the game, man. ain't nobody watching, Southern you classic bands, they rockin' Dance line, groovin' to the music, movin' Johnny Don't you wanna go?
go to a place in your life where everyone around you look just like you. Stars around, shining bright, surrounded by black, or you on space flight. See, you don't need a spaceship to go to a different world. It feels like home, but this is a different world where your skin is thin and everyone is different. You don't have to fit a type, you don't have to be a token. You're not defined by preconceived notion. Love your life, drink your potion. You can be who you want to be in this place safe from the hierarchy. Your race, black folks from around the world in one location. They vacation to Winston Salem and Prairie View, Langston Dillon and TSU, Wiley College and VSU Lane and Cheney and Fam. You hey. Park Atlanta, Talladega, Tugaloo and Alabama State, Jackson and Delaware State, North Carolina, A&T, Bethune, Cookman, learn to teach, Wilbur Force, plus 86 more. Me, Diddy, Oprah, we're chilling on a yacht. They say black college helped them get the money that they got. They said, I had the time of my life. HBC. I love my H from my B, my B from my C. I love my HBC.